Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode. So a few days ago I did a question and answer on my Instagram page and one of the questions I got was what top five boats would I have if I could only have five? So I thought long and hard about that and I figured I'd, well, I'd want one for whitewater, I'd want a canoe solo, I'd want a tandem canoe, I'd want a sea kayak, and I'd want a fishing kayak. And I came up with my top five. What I didn't realize in a few days I would be quarantined to my house and I looked around and you know what? Those are the exact five boats I have, plus a couple more, because let's face it, I own a kayak shop. But today what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my number one pick, and that was the Northwind Solo. And I'm going to take it for a paddle and bring you guys along. All right, I'll load it up and strap down. The Northwind I use is a white gold layup. Heavy duty, can take a beating. I get this one of the stoutest layup because it's going to get the most use. It's going to get the most beat up, riding around in cars and doing shuttles, or be strapped to the top of a razor. So... If you wonder why I strap it to the top of the razor, here's why. This is how we got to get into this place. Should just be able to punch through. Yeah, here we go. Like a glove. How's that for some VIP parking? Might have to break through a little ice to get out today, but uh, the white gold layup will handle that no problem. All right, so I made it to Lake McCumber here. And I guess I feel like I need to set the stage a little bit for you guys because uh, a lot's changed, you know, the past few days. Our world as we know it is not the same. It's different. It won't be the same after this virus as it was before. We are in the peak shutdown of the coronavirus. This is actually our first day of actually shutting the shop down. I laid off all the employees this morning, except for Josh, who's helping me wrap some stuff up and then ship your guys' online orders. But for the most part, you know, all our events, all the paddle fest, all the things we're doing right now have been shut down. And I happen to be up here in Shingletown, which you guys know if you watch the channel. I spent my winter here taking care of my grandma Kay and paddling and having fun and riding bikes. And we were supposed to be in Lodi like in, in a week we were moving home. And then all this happened and we're sort of sheltered in place, locked down here. And it just changed my perspective. It changed everything for me. Because I'm no longer thinking about how am I going to go rah-rah, you know, sell boats and be the man for all these events and do all these things. And kind of humbly realize that whatever you have can be taken away from you in a minute. And, uh, you know, whenever I feel down and out or, you know, the world kind of seems against me, I can't think of a better place to be than in my canoe. This is my home base. This is my square one. This is where I'm the most me. In fact, I think I posted that at the end of last season. I like myself best when I become a boat. I remember saying that, and that stuck with me to my core. And so I'm going to try to be my best through this. I'm going to try to be a source of positivity in this community, in paddle sports, and hopefully in, in my subscribers' lives. And I'm going to try my best to show you guys what it means to kind of, you know, live this out. You know, be socially distant, but also social. I want to talk to you guys. I want to hear where you're at. I want to know what's going on in your life. So do me a favor. Uh, if this speaks to you in any way, leave that in the comment section. Let's come together. Let's get together. Let's talk about our love for this sport. And hopefully we can all make this out the other side and it's not going to be as big of a deal as we all think. Um, and if it is a big deal, hopefully this is a rallying point that we can all get together and with a common interest and a common love and a enthusiasm for the outdoors. So real quick, let's look at my canoe here. This is a Northwind Solo. It's made by North Star Canoes. Again, white gold layup, aluminum trim. This is my rough and tumble workhorse. I do aluminum because it's pretty well indestructible. I love wood and I have wood on a lot of my other canoes. But on this one, I just wanted to be able to grab this thing and throw it around. Uh, talking a little bit about the boat, you see it's got a nice high shoulder here. That's called tumble home. And what that does is allows you to paddle really nice close to the boat. But with a real high shoulder, it allows you to lean it way over. And when this boat leans, it carves a turn. One thing I love about the Northwind Solo is it has a little bit of rocker in the back, a fair amount in the front. It tracks well, it has good speed, but man, when you put a boat like this on the edge, it really wants to spin around. If I could only have one canoe, this would be the one because it kind of does everything well. I do the kneeling seat because I like to kneel. Other than that, canoes are simple. So it's not really ice, it's more of like a, uh, a slush, I guess you'd say. So again, I'm out here at beautiful Lake Macumber. It's a small little lake. It's tiny. You guys may recognize it from, uh, I've done a couple videos here, like the canoeing on Mother's Day with my mom I did here. And then I also did my top five kayaks under 300 bucks. I reviewed some boats. And it's just a quiet, serene place. I mean, I haven't seen another boat out here in literally months. 
in summertime, it gets really popular. There's a, uh, a kids camp across the way. Tons of fly fishermen come here. But in wintertime, nobody's got paddling on the brain. You know, nobody wants to wheel through snow, launch an ice to come out here. So a good place for me to be socially distant. So I don't know how many of you out there are canoeists that are watching this, but I wanted to just touch a little bit about strokes because people kind of shy away from canoes because they tend to be a little bit more work to paddle. I'm not saying they're necessarily harder to paddle, I just think they take a little bit more technique. But kind of the beauty of a canoe to me is with a single blade, you can get this boat to go and do whatever you want it to just by grabbing and gripping the water. So with any stroke, there's kind of two things you can do. I like to think of a grip stroke. My paddle's gripping the water and I'm pulling it past me. And then a slip stroke where my paddle can then slide back through the water. And when I'm doing a J stroke, I'm kind of combining those two things. Putting the paddle in up in front, pulling it back. And at the end of it, I'm rolling my thumb down and pushing that paddle out. What that does sort of acts like a rudder. As I paddle on the right side, it makes my boat want to go to the left. And then that rudder will kind of slide it back to the right. Take my stroke, roll my thumbs down, and I'm using this, this is my lever, prying myself back to the right. And when you get this going efficiently and smooth, that J stroke feels effortless. And you're constantly in contact with the water, constantly feeling the water with your paddle blade. And it's just a really nice feeling. The other thing is with that stroke, now I can link up things. So if I want to get in there and do a draw stroke, a bracing stroke, my paddle's always in the water doing whatever I ask it to. The idea with the J stroke is if you get this going right, you don't constantly have to be switching sides. I can simply paddle on one side, keep myself going straight, and every stroke I do a little correction to keep myself in line. Sometimes it helps to pick a point on the horizon and keep your nose pointed there. If you get a little off to, to one side, you can grab a big paddle, straighten yourself out, do that J stroke to get it back in line. The next stroke I want to talk about is a draw stroke. So if I'm going forward and I want my boat to carve to the right, instead of switching sides and paddle on the left, I can kind of use my paddle blade to do a grip stroke out into the water, pull my paddle towards my bow. As I'm planning it, I'm actually thinking about my legs too, driving the boat towards that paddle. Yeah, it just feels good. Every little draw is a micro correction. Dancing with your canoe. So I get a lot of people that ask me, why a canoe? Why would you want a canoe over a kayak? Because kayaks seem like, you know, they're quite a bit easier. They're less expensive for a decent kayak. You know, what makes a canoe so special? And uh, a lot of that's kind of hard to explain to somebody because it really just comes down to a feel and a preference on the water. But a composite canoe, it just allows you to connect so much to the boat. Um, I don't think there's a pure form of paddling that I know of. It's just this big blade, this is your hand in the water, and you can just grab the water and get that canoe to do whatever you want. And then a nice, stiff, composite solo canoe, it just feels like an extension of you. Um, anything I want this boat to do, I can manipulate and control just by my paddle stroke. So I guess it comes down to feel, like anything else. Like, why do people ride a certain kind of motorcycle or drive a certain kind of car or... Uh, ride a certain style of bike. It just comes down to like what feels good. What gets you excited when you're out there? Now I'll also say this. I got into solo canoeing because I was a backpacker. Love to get out in the wilderness, hike into a place where nobody else has been, and just set up camp and kind of make it home for the weekend. At that point I was working at a bike shop. I was big into bikes. I loved backpacking. Loved being outside. And a friend of mine came into the bike shop and he had just bought a kayak. And you guys know my buddy, if you know Josh, who's on this channel occasionally, he's the store manager of the shop. He's the one that's shipping your gear out. Um, he came into the shop with a kayak. I'm like, dude, what are you gonna do with that thing? Why did you get a kayak? That seems so crazy, we live in Lodi. And he's like, no man, there's tons of places you can go and get this. We're going this weekend and we're going camping and they put all their gear in these things. We're gonna camp to the back of a lake or we're gonna paddle to the back of the lake and camp out. And I was like, dude, you what? It just blew my mind. I had never even thought of that. 
and I thought about places like Silver Lake or Bear River Reservoir, all these really cool lakes that I've been in the past that would have awesome camping right along the banks, these little high Sierra mountain lakes. So uh, thankfully there was a shop in my town at the time that rented kayaks. So I grabbed a kayak and we went camping. And from that moment on, I was just sold. I was like, okay, this is it. It wasn't too long after that, but I realized, okay, kayaks are awesome, but a solo canoe, think about what you could do, like how much gear you could bring, so much more versatile. And the more I did research about, you know, camping out of watercraft, kayaks or canoes, uh, it seemed like the solo canoe was really the best tripping option. And it just so happened at that time, there was a friend of mine who had just got done writing a bunch of guidebooks in Northern California, a guy named Bill Vanderbilt. And he was a big time canoeist. And he's like, man, I've been beating up this canoe through all these hundreds of trips. And honestly, I'm ready to let it go. He sold it to me for 300 bucks. It was a Winona Advantage. It was a Kevlar solo canoe. It was kind of like a, a racing canoe, it was super fast, super long. Held all my gear and did anything I wanted it to do. And that was really what got me into it, man. I paddled that canoe everywhere. I bought it for 300 bucks and I feel like I got a million dollars worth of fun out of that thing. And ever since then, uh, you know, it's been, kind of been my home base. After that, I got into sea kayaking, I got into whitewater. I did all sorts of different forms of paddling. But for me, anytime I step foot in a solo canoe, it feels like home. It takes me right back to my roots. In fact, right back to this very lake was one of the first places I really got started. So here's the old Camp McCumber youth camp. You can see the little swim beach here. And in the summertime, they've got kayaks and canoes out here. Such a cool place for kids to come out and get exposed to the sport, get exposed to the outdoors a little bit. I'm just messing around a minute here, punching through the ice. And then I look over here and look, you got a great blue hair and just chilling out. That guy's gotta be frozen. So I'm making my way back here to Battle Creek where Battle Creek flows into the lake. Always a good spot to check out wildlife. Pretty much always something going on. I see some ducks there. Oh, there they go. Awesome. I hope this inspires you to get out and find what adventure, what outdoor opportunities are in your backyard uh, that you can safely distance yourself from other people. I'm not wanting to put anybody at risk, but I do want to encourage you, if you have an outdoor space where you can be alone, take that time. Nature has a way of healing us, a way of meeting us, a way of teaching us that we can't understand. John Muir said it best, in every walk in nature, one receives more than he expects. And I definitely live by that. So hopefully this can get you guys out. I do want to be mindful that everyone's circumstances are different. And some of you may live in an urban setting in a, in a place where you just can't get out safely. And to those people, I hope this is a, a little window into another world. I hope this is a little reprieve from what you're going through. It's really important for me to use this time to connect with you guys too, because I'm a social person. I love interacting with you guys. And you know that'll help get me through knowing that you guys are out there paddling too. Share your stoke with us on our, our Facebook group. We have Headwaters Yak Live Facebook group. You can tag us, Headwaters Kayak, on Instagram or at Headwaters Kayak. Uh, whatever you can do to stay connected with us, you guys. If you have any more questions on, you know, wh whether it be canoeing or strokes or, or whatever might come up, do me a favor, just leave those down in the comments section. Give me something to do while, it's, uh, while I'm stuck inside here. Stay safe, hug that family, and until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.